everyone, it's Helen here from Bodywork Pilates and we continue our How to Get the Best From series. So we're going to look today at, at some more functional work, some more strength standing work. We're going to actually look at three linked exercises, so it's quite a long one, so stick with it. But it's a really valuable little series of exercises. Again, working on building that strength that stands us up unaided, that gets us up off the floor, that gets us out of our chairs. All of those things that we need as we age, that stability around the pelvis and around the hips and through the legs. So the first thing we're going to start with is something called a hip hinge. So if you've ever been into a gym, you would recognise this as a deadlift. The positioning of this is absolute key. So there is no point in doing this half-heartedly and don't try and make it too big either. So we're going to stand with the feet about hip distance apart, so just about your natural stance. Allow for any natural turnout from the upper edge of the hips, so that slight rotation that wraps a little to the glutes. Think about balancing the weight, so we have the weight directly above the instep, not too heavily to the heels, not too heavily into the toes. The ribs are drawn in, the hips are open, the pubic bone slightly lifts to elongate but not flat of the low back. You might feel that natural engaging of the abdominals, that natural sensation of support from the body. The chin slightly draws in, hands just rest, crown of the head reaches to the ceiling. So we're in our good, firm, standing position. All we're going to do from here is soften off the knees a little. Doesn't need to be a massive bend, but we definitely take the knees off lock. Think about this front edge of the body. So we've talked about this before, but the bony landmarks at the front of the body. So the distance from the wrist to the hips, from the breastbone to the pubic bone. So those distances don't change throughout this exercise. And in fact, they don't change at all through any of the three exercises we're going to work with. So we keep that same distance. We keep the same curves in the spine, that little curve behind the back of the neck, that little curve of the low back. And we're going to just simply hinge forward from the hip like a little bow. So from here, keeping these same distances, simply bow forward and then stand back up again. So I'm not rounding into it, I'm not going too low, I just want to move from my hips and if it helps, put the fingers into the hip creases, either side of the pubic bone and just hinge forward, little bend at the knee, you don't need to have the leg completely straight and then stand back up again. And what you'll feel as you come forward is a slight lengthening across the glutes and into those hamstrings, tops of the thighs. And then to come back up again, those muscles contract to lift us back up again. So we get a good amount of strength going on through the back edge of the body. So again, this front edge doesn't change. As we breathe out, we just hinge forward. Our eye line travels down. We don't need to keep the head looking forward. And then we contract through the hamstrings, through the glutes to stand back up again. Okay, so try that a few more times. Keeping the weight centered, don't try and push your bottom backwards as you do this. So a little slight corset, wrapping, engagement, girdle, whatever it is you recognize it to be. And we just hinge a little. And then we stand back up. So there's no need to put any weight into the hands. The body is, is enough. You could just let the hands drift if you wanted to. Imagine that you're holding a, a set of weights if you wanted to, but there's no real need. Our body weight is sufficient for this. So that's the core of the next two exercises. Keeping that long spine, not rounding, not shortening, maintaining the length to the neck and to the back of the spine. Okay, so that's your hip hinge. That naturally morphs onto monkey squat. It's what we call in, in Pilates, we call it monkey squat. It's a squat, but it's a functional squat. So this would be the activity that we want to maintain. It's our safe, lift, safe lifting activity. So if we wanted to pick something up from the floor, we would do it with a monkey squat, rather than rounding over and, and leaving the back unsupported. So from here, all we do is we start with our little hip hinge. So we get up, our balance, our position. We start with our little hip hinge and then we bend the knees as if we're going to pick up a box from the floor and then simply stand up again. So a slight hinge, keep the length of the spine, front and back of the body, and then stand back up again. So a little hinge, 
those knees track second and third toes and it might be that for whatever reason you don't touch the floor that might be your ankle mobility it may be something to do with your knees it may even be around the hips it might just be general stiffness and immobility but just do the best you can in the best possible manner that you can remember quality trumps quantity every single time so better to do six fabulous movements than to do a dozen haphazardly okay so quality over quantity every time so let's just recap those two so we start get your position slight engagement maybe a lift of pelvic floor keep the weight balanced we start with a slight softness of the knees and we just hinge so there's our hip hinge little hip hinge some of you will go further than others that little hinge that lengthening and then that contraction to bring us up and then we add into that the knee bend so we start with the hinge we bend the knees we come down and then we drive back up again we hinge we bend we drive back up again okay all right so the third exercise within this little trio that I tend to work with is a functional squat, a functional lunge, I'm sorry, functional lunge. So I think we're all familiar with doing that very upright um, lunge, aren't we? And we're always told this is really good for us, um, and it is, but it can be better. So what we're going to do is we're going to add that dip into what we've just done. So we take our feet, one forward of the other. They could be hip distance. They don't have to be right behind each other. This isn't tandem stance. We could be slightly apart, okay? And I just want you to take, so just start as if you were taking a step. So if you were stepped, you would step that back heel would lift, okay? And then the other side, you step the back heel lift. So that's the sort of stance you want to get. So it's not a massive, big, big lunge here, okay? It's just as if you were going to take a step. Just gonna take a step, okay? So take a step, I've got my right leg forward, my left heel is lifted, okay? I'm gonna think about my balance, because my balance is challenged. I'm gonna think about the way I'm placed, so my knee is always gonna track my second and third toe as it bends. My back heel's gonna stay lifted, and then I'm gonna do exactly what we did before. So from here, keeping my spine long, thinking about the spaces at the front edge of the body, I'm going to do a little hip hinge. I'm going to hinge slightly. And then I'm going to add my squat. And I'm going to pick up my box from the floor and stand back up again. Okay? So, so I'm going to hinge a little. I'm going to keep the same length of the front and the back edge of the body. I'm going to bend my knees. I'm going to pick up. I'm going to stand up. So hinge, bend, stand. And then, of course, you do the same thing on this side. So whether you did a few on one side and then a few on the other, or whether you alternated each time, so maybe you step, hinge, bend and lift, step back and then change. And you could do that. So on the other side, again, it's just as if we we're going to take a step, a stride out, but it's not massive. Back heel is lifted. Everything stays facing forward. We're a little challenged in our balance, which is great. And we're going to hinge a little keeping the length of the spine, front and back edge of the body. We're going to bend and we're going to lift back up again. So don't complete the movement by rounding the spine. So if you don't get all the way down to the floor and you only get to here, then that's fine. Do that rather than doing that. It's not about getting to the floor. It's about the way you aim towards the floor. So you want to keep that long spine. You keep those natural curves throughout the spine in every one of those movements. Now the great thing about your functional squat compared to your ordinary squat, your, your functional lunge as opposed to your ordinary lunge, that upright lunge that we're perhaps a little bit more familiar with, is that you use your glutes a whole lot more and you can test that out for yourself. So if you were to take a big long stride, put your hands on your own bottom and were to bend both knees and come back up again and just check out what's happening through the bottom. Now there'll be a little bit of activity, of course there will, but now try it again in that functional lunge. So as if we were going to take a walk, okay, 
hands onto the bottom, hinge a little, bend those knees, stand back up again, and I can guarantee the glute on this forward leg will work like bilio. So if you want to work your bottom, get that nice peachy bottom, and, uh, and really work into your strength and your functionality, then that's the lunge to do. So have a go of those, see what you think, and let me know. Take care.